And finally, new rule, if you're out protesting for a couple of hours wearing this, you have to go all the way and spend an afternoon running errands wearing one of these. You can't side with the people who ruthlessly oppress women without at least getting a taste of what you're supporting. Well, now that summer is here and the Hamas-backing college protesters have dispersed back to their summer internships at Goldman Sachs, I thought it might be a good time to say this. I actually admire your youthful idealism, and our world would be poorer without it. Much like your parents, who just wasted 300 grand on that ignorance factory you call a college. Not that I think it's your fault being this poorly educated and morally confused. That takes a village. Shitty schools, overindulgent parents, social media. But three cheers to you for at least having the impulse to seek a cause in something bigger than yourself. It's just that the one you picked, you missed the boat by a fucking mile. But here's the good news. You want a cause? Because I totally got one for you. Apartheid. Yeah, apartheid, the thing you've been shouting about with Israel for months. Never mind that Israeli Arabs are actually full citizens. So naturally, when you heard that Israel was an apartheid state, it gave you such a boner, you literally pitched a tent. You knew how wrong it was when tens of millions of South Africans had been treated like second-class citizens just because of their race. But here's the thing. Today, right now, hundreds of millions of women are treated worse than second-class citizens. When you mandate that one category of human beings don't even have the right to show their face, that's apartheid. This is something that's been on my mind for a very, very long time and something that's really, really frustrated me when it comes to modern day Western feminists, that they have voluntarily decided to stand 10 toes deep at it completely ignoring the cries for help and the oppression of women in different cultures simply because they feel like that culture belongs to the oppression group because that culture in their minds anyway is slightly tan and kind of brown and so we can't talk about the crimes of them we can't talk about them being oppressors because we just kind of generally feel like they're the oppressed so criticizing the oppressed is kind of like punching down which is really not allowed and kind of a sin when it comes to the very radical progressive woke left the last couple of years women in Iran have been saying take this hijab and shove it because in 2022 a young woman named Masa Amini was arrested for wearing her mandatory hijab incorrectly and then died in police custody and now security forces have killed over 500 people protesting her death and this obvious human rights violation how about defunding those police I mean, it's kind of one of those things where it's gone too far. You know what I mean? Like after 9-11, there was a lot of Islamophobia against Muslims in general and as a whole. And I guess to combat that, it's kind of like, well, we just won't talk about any negativity. We won't do, we won't say one bad word or, or hold them to accountable for their crimes because we're fighting against Islamophobia. You can't criticize Islam. You can't criticize Muslim cultures or countries. Amnesty International says that Iranian authorities are waging a war on women that subjects them to constant surveillance, beatings, sexual violence, and detention. What P. Diddy calls a hotel stay. Honestly, even ex-Muslims, especially women who've come out and talked about their lived experience, have been silenced for the most part. It's kind of the same thing with detransitioners. De you know, you have the, again, woke, progressive, queer umbrella left who, you know, queer voices. But when these people come out and talk about their testimonies, it's like, no, shut up. Your, your ideology or your lived experience doesn't match my ideology. And because these people ideology, like lots of people, is part of their identity and they don't want their identity attacked. It's mean Muhammad is a human rights rights activist who got married off to a Muslim man with fundamentalist views about women not exactly uncommon in the Muslim world. He forced her to wear the niqab all the time, including once beating her because she took her hijab off at home because the apartment had a window through which people might see in. And this was in Vancouver. Funny how when you look under Bill Maher's video and you looked under uh, another video that I'm going to show in a second of you know, under Bill Maher's video, there's there's comment after comment after comment after comment after comment of people who lived it. This is their lived experience. This is how they grew up. This is their childhood. This is their culture. This was their religion or is their religion. People saying thank you as an Iranian, as a Muslim, as someone who escaped as a refugee. Thank you. This is truth. This is fact. Here's what Yasmin said about veiling. 
It just suppresses your humanity entirely. It's like a portable sensory deprivation chamber and you are no longer connected to humanity. You can't see properly. You can't hear properly. You can't speak properly. People can't see you. You can only see them. Just little things, passing people on the street and just making eye contact and smiling, that's gone. You're no longer part of this world and so you very quickly just shrivel up into nothing under there. And that's my answer when someone says Islamophobe. The same thing under these, the woman's, um, that I'm going to play her testimony under her video is people thanking her for speaking out, right? People saying, I live this, what she's saying is true, what she's saying is fact. But then you have what seemingly looks like, anyway, a bunch of mostly white progressive Westerners who know nothing about that culture, religion, or country because they are not there, they didn't live it, basically saying this is Islamophobia, shut up, be quiet, this is not true, this is propaganda. Again, you haven't lived it. The people who lived it are saying, thank you, this is fact. The people who didn't live it is saying, be quiet, shut up, don't talk about this. Because again, it attacks their ideology, which in return attacks their identity. And it's really hard for people to f to dissect their identity and dissect their beliefs because a lot of times people hold on to it near and dear. They worship it like it's their god. I am Syrian Lebanese. I'm also a German citizen. I'm one of many millions who had to leave the Middle East. I'm one of the few who still remember why we had to leave. Life was hell, and it still is for the majority of people in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Iran, thanks to the Iranian regime and its allies and proxies. The Iranian regime, you claim, has the right to defend itself. Its proxies, such as Hamas, that you are championing on the streets in the West. Have you ever wondered why we haven't seen mass pro-Palestine protests in the Middle East? See, in the West, you are privileged. You can demand even without understanding. Back where I come from, we don't demand. We are grateful if we find the means to feed our children, to pay the rent, to buy our medication. We are thankful if we're not arrested, tortured and raped. You should know that you are supporting our oppressors, that you are betraying us, all of us, the Gazans included. And it just really freaking angers me to, again, see very young, progressive, woke, liberal left, and, and a lot of these women claim to be feminists, again, ignore the cries for freedom and the cries for help from women in other countries simply because those countries are kind of in the impressed group, right? I saw a video with Lauren Sutherland and this is when she was like really, really, really right-winged, but she was going to these women feminist marches and stuff like that and she was bringing up the oppression of women in the Middle East and other countries and other cultures and people were literally gasping for air at the fact that she was just stating facts. This is a feminist march, but as feminists, you refuse to talk about the oppression of other women. Hey everyone, okay, so I'm here back to my roots of starting on YouTube at a women's march once again. Yes, they are still going on despite rape still not being legal in the West. Uh, and this time I'm gonna be asking a bit of a different question. Instead of asking about rape culture, instead of asking about feminist values, I'm going to be asking the most difficult would you rather question out there. Would you rather have women's rights or Islam? Let's see how they react. Women's rights? Or Islam? I'm not is that a that real question. choice? Is that a real question? That's ridiculous. No. Why is it ridiculous? I think it's a very serious so question. Anyway, there's only two options. Have women's rights or Islam? What? <laughs> Why is that yeah, even a question? Oh my God. We're not, but this is not about Islam. Mate, it but your rights to are... Go to go away. Why are you at this rally asking that question, provoking like an argument which there's no point? Why can't we just band together about feminism instead of you coming along here and starting a religious debate? Because some people, some people believe you should be stoned for the crime of being raped, and if you are protesting rape, you should be protesting the people that want to hurt you for being raped as well. It's like we want equality for women, but not those women. 
We want freedom for women, but not those women. We want w women's voices to be heard, but not those women. Not if you're an ex-Muslim. Not your voices, right? It's the same thing when they scream. They, you know, they stand behind black and brown people. But then, <laughs> when black and brown people or people of color say something they don't like, well, we stand for black voices, except your voice. It's really, really frustrating to see people support groups, terrorist groups, who have directly harmed and oppressed women and the lgbtq in men in some ways directly or indirectly supported the oppression of women and the queer community <laughs> خداوند از این فرش دختر هست نمی کرد ما این چه خرف نمی شدیم که قدر بدش هست هستیم نه نه می فهمم امور بسیار زیاد نارد حتی از بودن خود در دنیا دیگه پشیمان هست نمیم کاش هیچ نمی بودیم در دنیا اصلا به وجود نمیم ما به اندازی از ایوان در ملت ازش نمیم ایوان ها خود سم میتنه سر با خود برم در رای خود در امه بکنه تا بخورم دو میتنه ما ایت جازی ها شا میدن نم There was a lot of comments under Bill Maher's videos, not a lot, there was a handful, most people supported this video, but there was a handful of videos saying, you're pushing the goal post bill, this is a straw man argument, and it's not a straw man argument, because if the protests was literally only saying ceasefire, anti-war chants, or, or protests, anti-war protests, then it would be a straw man, but that's not what's happening. Maybe as you as an individual, you're not calling for the genocide of Jews, which is the river to the sea. You're not calling for violence for Jewish people, which is uh, antifada. You're not calling for another terrorist attack which is long live October 7th If you're not saying those things personally, then it's not you. But we've seen protesters do this over and over and over again. They are supporting oppressive groups. 15 countries in the Middle East, including Gaza, have laws that require women to obey their husbands. Laws. And those societies also have guardianship laws, which means a woman needs permission from her husband to work, to travel, to leave the house, to go to school, to get medical attention. Nothing? Honor killings, where women are murdered by their own fathers and or brothers, happen so frequently they can't even have an accurate account of how many. In 59 countries, there are no laws against sexual harassment in the workplace, and many have no laws against domestic violence or spousal rape. 20 countries have marry your rapist laws. Multiple societies have laws about what jobs women can and can't do. Make a Barbie movie about that. 30 countries practice female genital mutilation, and 650 million women alive today were married as children. Kids, if you really want to change the world and not just tie up Monday morning traffic, this is the apartheid that desperately needs your attention, gender apartheid. You are literally supporting the patriarchy. It's the same thing when feminists literally support men colonizing women's spaces and calling it, no, this is just trans rights. Like, it's, it's so mind boggling to me that you guys don't see what you're doing, that you can't reflect on what you're doing. You have feminists, modern day, radical day feminists in universities voluntarily covering themselves with an oppression cloth for many, many uh, Muslim women. It is oppressive. Some women like it. Some women embrace it. But for a lot of people, it's oppressive. Voluntarily putting themselves in an oppressive cloth, voluntarily getting behind men and bowing. <laughs> 
And these are progressive Western day feminists and they don't see the irony in this. This is what happens when you are a cult member. You don't think, it's like your critical thinking part of your brain just turns off and you go, my ideology is this and whatever I'm told is part of my ideology falls into this and I don't have to think that hard about it. And this is not just leftists. I mean, a lot of people do this, religious people do this. A lot of people just like, I don't wanna think too hard. So let me just adopt an ideology or adopt a religion or an adopt a God and I don't have to think too hard about it. Just tell me what belongs in my box. And I would happily stay in that box. I love when he talked about that there is a female apartheid, a woman apartheid. I think that is the, the perfect Sane. I think that coins it perfectly. This is what should be the social justice issue of your time. How about from the river to the sea, every woman shall be free. But in... <laughs> but in reality, it's not an issue at all, for one reason. The people who are doing it aren't white. I hate to have to be the one to break it to you kids, but non-white people can do bad things too. Now, white on black racism certainly has been of one of history's most horrific scourges, but also it's true that in today's world, being non-white means you can get away with murder. So good on you kids for following your instinct to protest social injustice. Just remember, when it comes to finding a cause, pulling your head out of your ass is an important rite of passage. But the thing is, the way they cope with it, the way they cope with it for to try to justify like why they they won't talk about it is they'll tell themselves that, well, that's just Western propaganda. Like, it's actually really a loving, embrace of, it's probably the most free for women's <laughs> women's rights in, in, in this religion, in these cultures. It, they, they love gay people. This is just Western propaganda because they're Islamophobic. But again, when the people who live there and lived through it, their lived experience, when they say their testimony, they're telling you to your face I live there I'm not Western I'm a refugee I ran away from this oppression I'm telling you it's a true it's la 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 I don't want to hear it you you just have internalized Islamophobia you're just a mouthpiece for white supremacy la 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 they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear it they just ignore it don't you see what's happening to women and children in Gaza I have internet of course I see but I'm from the Middle East, and my seeing is not selective. I see beyond Gaza. I see what's happening in Lebanon, in Iran, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria. Remember Syria? More than half a million killed. More than half the population displaced. But the Jews were not involved, so who cares? Anyway, I also see what's happening in the UAE and in Saudi Arabia, following a vision working steadily for the benefit of the people. I saw what happened on October 7th and I became active on social media. Do you know why? Up until then, I had hoped that the vision followed by the UAE and Saudi Arabia would eventually help the region out of the mud. Instead, Hamas wanted to abort the process. We had thought that the Iranian regime fears the Western retaliation. And we were proven wrong. On October 7th, the axis of resistance led by Iran declared an open war not only against Israel, but against Western civilization, part of which we are witnessing on university campuses around the globe. If you see the pattern and understand why this is dangerous, I invite you to speak up before it's too late. I saw a TikTok video, and I'm not going to look for it, but I saw a TikTok video from my queers for Palestine, and she was saying like, oh my god, all these people, all these crazy Trump supporters are telling me that gay people don't have rights in, in these countries. Well, <laughs> I have so many, so many Muslim people in my comment section, and they love me, so I know you're telling a lie. But then when queer people are literally dying and are literally telling their tos testimonies how they were oppressed in these countries. I mean, it was that famous story about the, the girl, the lesbian, who like ran away from the Middle East <laughs> because she was going to get forced to be married to a man. I'll see if I can find the story if I can't find it. You have to Google it, Google it yourself. It was really famous because she used Twitter to help her escape. 
but it's not happening. It's just Western propaganda. No, it's a cope. It's a cope to keep their cognitive dissonance going, to say, no, it's okay that I'm supporting these oppressive groups. I'm, it's okay that I'm supporting groups that go against everything I say that I, I stand for because it's really just Western propaganda and I don't, I don't have to listen to that. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I don't wanna keep this video too long. It's just really, really disappointing in Western modern day feminist where there can be the world is on fire over here and they ignore it so they can pay attention to the bits of crumbs on the ground you know like mansplaining or manspreading or this 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 <laughs> this delusion that there's a giant uh, wage uh, a sex wage gap for absolutely no reason it's not because the person has more experience or more education or they're better at the jump or they negotiated the contract better no no no. it's simply because you have a vagina um yeah th those things they like to pay attention to but women over here who are literally being put to death because they don't want to cover their head let's ignore that that's not important right again if you're just protesting ceasefire and anti-war, I would say this is a straw man, but you're not. You're supporting terrorist groups who oppress the people that you say you stand for. But no one's surprised that you do this because the progressive left have been doing this for years now. They say they stand for something until you say something they don't like, and then it's like, well, we stand for voices of your category, your oppressed group, unless you say something we don't like and attacks our, attacks our ideology or attacks our identity. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go. Let me know what you guys think what Bill Maher said. I also wanna thank all the new subscribers that I have. Welcome. I'm gonna keep my foot on the neck of this situation because I think more people need to talk about it and I'm kind of sick of seeing so much hate and ignorance towards Israel and Jewish people and just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand for it anymore so I'm gonna keep talking about it just like I'm gonna keep my, uh, my foot on the neck when it comes to trans kids and stuff like that. Like, I'm not letting it go. I don't care if people get sick or tired of this conversation. I'm also gonna keep my foot on the neck of the, the, the COVID and the vaccine uh harm people I'm gonna keep my foot on it and i don't care if people don't want to hear it it's not a fun topics and i don't always want to keep this channel serious but sometimes people need to talk about it anyway guys gonna go please like comment subscribe hit the bell the notification when i do upload all oh, that really does help with the algorithm guys and if you'd like to support the channel free please for the love of god donate my paypal and cash app link is in the comment section down below and you can super thanks and you guys have an amazing beautiful day bye And finally, new rule, if you're out protesting for a couple of hours wearing this,